Elden Ring is a video game that I have been casually playing on and off since it came out. And I wanted to play it a lot more today because it was supposed to be a day off for me, but my PC died and I have to wait for a new one to be delivered. So I figured, heck, instead of playing it, let's talk about it. And this is not going to be a super thorough professional review. I'm not that big a video game fan. I play games a couple times a week just for a few hours to help myself relax, usually on my Twitch. And I haven't even, full disclosure, completely beaten Elden Ring, but yet I still have a lot to say about specifically the gameplay throughout what has been my experience so far. So if you're looking for someone who's going to give you the in-depth pro gamer angles, go check out IGN. $20. $20 is what they offer. That's a, that's a, they're, they're, they're a gaming professional. Consider this the casual gamer review for Elden Ring because I have become fascinated with From Software's approach to the development of their Souls franchise and other things as well. And they've probably become my favorite all-time games. I have beaten Dark Souls 1 and 3. I've played Bloodborne off stream myself and started and really enjoying it. And Elden Ring, I'm a good mount into. And for me, there's this study of what makes what they're trying to achieve within their games work. And it's going to vary from person to person, but I like to think of it as the difficulty to punishment scale, where in the Souls games, there was high difficulty and high punishment. If you died in Dark Souls 3, the guarantee of getting back to your dropped souls was not guaranteed at all. I would even say likely when you're like me and you suck. And I really liked that. I liked that in Dark Souls 1 and 3 and the bit of 2 that I played, every single time I got punished for being bad, it was like, oh, I need this challenge, I have to improve. And then there came Elden Ring, which I find to be just the right level of difficulty for what it's trying to be. I really love how difficult Elden Ring is right out the gate. When I left that little you know, beginning area and the first thing I came across was that guy on horseback who just paddled my ass, I was like, yes, this is the difficulty I have wanted. But then after he killed me again and again, I kept getting back to my souls again and again. You know, it was the first area, no big deal. They're just right there, it's fine. But that kept happening and the rate at which I died on my way to my, not souls, whatever they're called in Elden Ring, you know what I mean? Was substantially lower than in previous Dark Souls entries. I was kind of not being punished hardly at all for not being good. And I believe it's somewhat or largely to do with the fact that it's open world. And full disclosure, I typically do not like open world games. I think they take away quite a bit from the structure that I personally, from my own preference, really crave within video games. I am a get me to the action or have something going on in the story type player. I don't like these big bloats of just you do something, it's just not my taste. So Elden Ring started to suffer for me because I was just so directionless. And I talked to several friends of mine who started Elden Ring and most of them missed starting the story, leveled up a ton and had to circle back to actually initiate the path they were supposed to go down, which is from software's approach in a lot of ways and fits right on in. Unlike some other open worlds that have a really long tutorial to make sure you're going to somewhat set down the right path, Elden Ring just kind of goes, go! And you're like, are we, are we racing? That guy is a sword, are we fighting? What, go! So this was just a case where I definitely would have liked Elden Ring more if it wasn't open world. That being said, there were several magical moments provided to me just because it was open world. Ah! No one told me there'd be a sexy tree. I loved accidentally wandering into an area I was very under leveled for and just having like a and drag and drop in and be like, haha, one shot. And those were like the only times where I felt really in danger of not getting my bits back. What the f are they called? I'm just gonna start calling them rings. 
I know that's not right, but I'm just gonna do it. It's gonna make people mad. In addition to that, the open world angle really forced me to also appreciate the landscapes they have crafted. I mean, even when I went back and played Dark Souls 1, I was absolutely in awe of just some of the vistas that were provided in the remastered version of a very old game. Like it was just stunning. And there was almost an open world feel to those first Dark Souls games. Like I wouldn't say they were purely stringent set path. And instead they kind of took this approach of like, you can go anywhere and fight whatever. And there's just the continual progression you can push along. And there's some fun side tangents you can go on. Elden Ring though is just a full on map and they've just put you on it and that complete lack of structure is not going to be what keeps me in love with a game. Okay, moving on from those topics, let's go ahead and talk about the enemies within Elden Ring. F That's it. That's game. Oh, never mind. Whew. That felt good. Wow. That felt good. <laughs> oh. Because I personally think they have nailed having just little peons you come across throughout Elden Ring and their open world map, because if they're going to do that type of encounter more often than they did in like Dark Souls, where it was a clear progression of difficulty going up and instead you're just meandering around, there was still this feeling of every group you could come across could end up in one of those situations where even low level people just all hit you at once and you died. You're like, Goodbye. 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 I said goodbye. I goodbye. I said goodbye. I said goodbye, and I mean it. This is way too many people. Fuck all that noise. Ow. That was right in my butt. Oh shit! Don't perceive me. Go away. Jesus, that was a lot of people. Good God. And I've seen people complain about that because it is admittedly frustrating. Maybe I'm a masochist because I really like that kind of frustration. And the most interesting part of having these just like groups of people coming around is occasionally you just hit a battle. Like there's this area where I came across T-Rexes, dragon rats fighting against these soldiers outside a castle and there are siege works going on. And I'm sitting here like, I'm just trying to eld Ah! What is the political situation that resulted in this? And that was so much fun, but it also spoke to how uninvested in the story I was, which I shouldn't even be mentioning because it's just a staple of From Software. You need to work to understand every bit of minutia happening within the Dark Souls games or Elden Ring. It is just a, if you don't want to care about the story, you can move along. And I even mean like along the main quests and not figure out what's going on. There's a hashtag going on in my stream that's no lore, only murder, because I fall into that sometimes. But my preference is for the story to be a bit more spoon fed to me. Maybe it's because I'm a book nerd and that's why I enjoy pieces of media for the story. But I don't like having to pause my momentum and my continual progression to have to look for small things or maybe one guy I gotta talk to that there's no sign I need to talk to him who's way over there just to find out what hell's going on. That isn't to say though, the world isn't tantalizing. I constantly want to know more. It's just that the way the game is designed, I feel like the burden has been put on me, the player. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that that's their preference. It's just not for me. And I think one of the biggest contributing factors as to why I was constantly wanting to know more is that everything is so meticulously designed to almost tell a story on presentation value. Like there's a couple bosses where you look at them and you're like, how did you get like that? What is this? Oh my Lord. I have to stop and talk to some dude who's 500 yards that way about, he's gonna just sit there and talk. Okay, I, uh, I'm just gonna look at the boss. The boss is pretty. And so what I'm left with is a game that was frustrating in all the right ways, all the ways that make me go, mm more, but frustrating in some wrong ways too, where the meta of the game, the way it was conceptualized, kind of put a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. So I do enjoy Elden Ring more than Dark Souls 1, and I love Dark Souls 1. This is not meant to be a, you know, Elden Ring's bad. I think it's probably the best game that's come out in recent years. Like I genuinely just, oh my God, this feels like it's a finished product, which it's sad that I have to say that. And it is an actual evolution of a previous type of gameplay. And what I would just like to see for like an Elden Ring 2 or whatever comes out next is a bit more structure added in 
from that Dark Souls type while also embracing the Elden Ring open world. Because at the end of the day, I think I can be talked into preferring the open world format purely because of those magical moments that happened while I was playing Elden Ring. Like just meandering into an area I should not be at yet or not in for ages and just having these, oh, can I fight that guy? Oh, he just one shot me with his eyes. So the answer to that question is no. And I know there's a lot of people who are probably wanting the structure to even be stripped back even more because there's these lights that kind of put you on the path in the general vicinity you're supposed to go into. And I'm sure there's some psychopath out there who's like, take him away, let me go wild. But maybe there should be just like a setting you can flip. <laughs> call, call it Grandpa Daniel's setting, or I'm sitting there and I'm too confused <laughs> and full of brain fog, which I got, to, uh, to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. And instead they'll just have a, a a little gnome who runs up to me and goes, that way, and here's what's happened so far in the story. Got it? Goodbye. And then he just sprints on off with his little butt wiggling. That would that would that would make Elden Ring a better game to me. I will say though, overall, I guess at this point, not having actually beat it, but just gotten many hours and just experiencing the world and wandering around and even off stream, just trying to have fun in the game, uh, I would still give Elden Ring like an 8.5 out of 10. Like it, it's such a refreshing piece of gaming content when we're in the age of either it's indie and it's complete, but it's still not like AAA quality or it's AAA and it's put out, not finished, and you gotta pay for it to essentially get it finished. Having Elden Ring just sit up here in it's a AAA title, it's a reasonable price, it's completely finished is Oh, like I just know it's gonna be my game of the year unless something truly spectacular happens. Uh, because even though I only enjoy it like an 8.5, I appreciate it higher than that. Anyway though, this has just been my ramblings about what I think worked and didn't work for me personally with an Elden Ring. And uh, I know I don't typically talk video games, but this is why. I'm not really the video game pro and I don't wanna fake being it, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, if you don't like that, I understand. But here, here, here's my drunken Elden Ring ramblings. Books, merch, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. Bye. You're pathetic. What? Wait, is he? Is that him? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs>